G'day, my name's Lloyd Grolleman, I'm the Aussie pastor, and I am just wrapped that you are here with me at Avondale College today. I've been walking across this rickety old bridge, and I'll tell you what, lucky my dog, she don't like it. But I love this place. It's where I was educated, it's where I've got a whole heap of friends, and yep, it's actually where I met Jesus too, so it's very special to me. But we're going all over the place today. We're going up to Queensland, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, I think you're really going to enjoy this. But before we go too much further, I want to take you back 27 years to Avondale College when I was a student in this place. This is the dairy where every morning at five o'clock I would milk a hundred head of cows. Beautiful girls, good milk. And this is the college auditorium where I learned to play basketball and I never got a hold of that game the whole time I was there, but I did get three broken ankles. And these dorms are where I made some of the best friends in my life, still mates today. What good times we had. And this is where I met Jane, right outside the music building on the hotspot. You might wonder what the hotspot was. Well. 27 years ago, there was a vent here and it used to have hot air pouring out of it and nights when it was cold and freezing, students, we'd all gather around it and keep warm and we'd talk. Students are good at that. She's a first year student, 18 years of age, first time away from home. I'll never forget her. Long red hair, freckles, beautiful, beautiful girl. And my mate Dean, one of my best mates actually from college here, he brings her along to the group, introduces her to us all, and it was the beginning of a very strong friendship. A friendship that went for many years. But this story doesn't have all that good an ending. And so we're all having a good time as a group. We're going out on Saturday nights, mucking around at college here. It was a great time. We're all getting to know each other better. Semester break. We all go home. Great to go home to family. Come back to college after semester break. No Jane. One week, two weeks. I'm thinking, oh, she's sick. She'll be back three weeks. No one knew where she was. Finally, we tracked her down in Melbourne, her home. And I remember ringing her and she said, hey, I've met this incredible guy. And he is changing my life. He's a Bible teacher. You've got to come and hear him. Well, I wasn't real religious at the time and I wasn't interested. But she said, he's changed my life and I've decided to follow him back to America. More than that, she said, God is telling me, and, and this is what I want you to get. She said, God is telling me that this man is the teacher, has the religion, has the way for me. And so Jane ends up going to the United States of America with this young Bible teacher. And I've got to tell you, at the time, I was alarmed. So I get a scholarship, this is amazing, God lives, to college in America, can't believe it. And so I ring Jane up and I'm going, hey, hey, I'm going to America too. She says, well, when you get there, give me a ring, I'm going to Waco, Texas. You know what? I never did ring her. And how I wish I had it. I spend my 12 months in America, I decide to come back here. I finish my degree at this place. I got picked up as a youth pastor. I go to the Gold Coast, it's 1993, and you know what? Jane is still in America. I turn on my television, I like to start the day of the news. And there's this big worldwide news event occurring, unfolding before my eyes. It's in Waco, Texas, right where Jane lives. And there is David Koresh with 80 of his followers holed up in some buildings, resisting the American law enforcement authorities. There's a gunfight, many day siege. And on April 19, 1993, I watched live on television as Jane, her two little children, her husband, and 80 others perished with David Koresh in the fires of Waco, Texas. What happened? This girl claimed she heard the voice of God. She was so sure and she followed what she believed was the voice of God to Waco, Texas. She got caught up in a sect and her and her family 
perished, what happened? How do we hear the voice of God? How do we know it's the voice of God or something more sinister? What happened to Jane? How can we be sure? Today I'm going to answer those questions. How can you be sure that you are hearing the voice of God? I'm going to show you how to hear the voice of God. And I'm going to show you how you can be sure it is the voice of God. This is a good program. Imagine I come to the airport with my girlfriend. I've only known her a couple of weeks and I'm going away on a trip somewhere. Now, I don't really know her that well, so I go away for a month, I say goodbye, she says goodbye, not even tears, we haven't known each other long enough. I come home after a month, the airport is chock a block full of people, she's there to meet me, you know, Lizzie, my wife, let's pretend she's my girlfriend back then, she's only five foot something, not real big, and she's in this big crowd of people at the arrivals and she's waving and she's yelling out to me, I can hear her voice but I can't. And do you know why? Because I don't know her that well. I've only known her, we're pretending, only known her for two weeks. I think that's what it's like with God. His voice is there. It's in our head. He is talking to us, but most of us don't know him. And so we don't hear his voice. And that's a big problem. And one I'm going to show you how you can defeat and beat. 25 years ago, right here on the Gold Coast, this is where I came for my first appointment as a pastor. And it was fabulous. I had such a great time and I found this place to live. Can you believe it? Right on the beach, 10 floors up, it was incredible. And when I came here, I'm right on the ocean. I can see from one end of the Gold Coast to the other. There's one sport I knew I had to try surfing and I tried it and I loved it and there was one beach in particular that I liked more than any other. Let me take you there because I got a little story I'll never forget this. Twenty-five years ago I used to surf up and down this coast. I knew every beach like the back of my hand. Well you know what? Seems like I don't know the back of my hand real well anymore because we've been driving for an hour and a half trying to find the beach I'm looking for for this story. It's nowhere, it's disappeared, must have been washed out to sea. Thing is, all the roads have changed, there's houses everywhere where there was paddocks, nothing is the same. 25 years is a long time. So I come here to Cabarita. Used to surf here too. It's not the actual story place, but that's okay. This place I like surfing, I used to go there by myself, morning and evening. When the surf was up, it was one of my favorite spots until one day my friend Mark, he lived down here on the coast, he used to surf too. He says, I was out the other day surfing our favorite spot. And he said, you know what? A shark popped his head up out of the water and looked at me. Now I'll tell you something, there's only one shark that does that, the tiger shark. And he's called a tiger shark because he's got stripes, just like a tiger when they want to be their man eaters. He said, I saw this tiger shark. He said, I paddled in as fast as I could. You know what? That became a real block, a mind block. It was a physical block to me going back to that beach and ever surfing again. It was a block, mental block, physical block. Just as that shark was a block to me going back to that beach. So there are blockages for you and me hearing the voice of God. Look at this text. Isaiah 59 verse 2, It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, He has turned away. A great big tiger shark cuts me off from surfing here. My sins, and we've all got them, your sins, we've got them. They cut us off from God. We can't hear His voice. We've got massive problems. Not only do I have a whole lot of voices in my head, but now I find out that my sins cut me off from hearing him. We've got big problems, but don't panic. It's going to be okay. Here in South Queensland, actually I've come home and it feels really good. 
and I'm with one of my mates, Russell. In fact, we go back a long way. He's now a pastor in the administration for this entire area. Russell, what's going on here? I can see a whole lot of people and some tents. Can you tell us a bit? Lloyd, this is the annual Seventh-day Adventist Convention, uh, which we like to call Big Camp. Okay, how many are here? We would have about 7,000 here today. Whoa. And uh, during the week, we have about 3,500 camping with us. And so Big Camp, what's that mean? Are people camping here or what? Well, Lloyd, we have a range of tents and caravans and units dotted all around these big tents you see. And uh, during the week, we have about 3,500 to 4,000 people camping all week. And why do they really come here? What's it all about? Lloyd, I think what, what uh, all of us love is to get together with people uh, of like mind, people who, who have a common interest, uh, enjoy each other's company, make new friends and of course worship together and, and I think people come uh, because it does wonders for the soul. So I've got a tent behind me. I can hear people singing. This one here is the big family tent, which, which reaches out particularly to adults during the day, but includes children at night as well. Thanks, Russell. I've got to tell you, this is a great fun place. I've been here since I was a kid. Grew up at this camp meeting, meeting once a year. So good. But I'm here to share with you a story. And I think this place helps set the scene. There's a story in the Bible about a character by the name of Moses. You open your Bible, I'll guarantee you, you're going to come across him very, very quickly. He is a powerful figure. And this Moses, he just marches into Egypt, old as you like, and he frees a million Hebrew slaves. They were building the pyramids. And this is one of the Bible's most amazing stories. And he takes them out into the desert, a million of them, and there they camp. Let's take the story from there. Exodus chapter 33, verse 7. It was Moses' practice to take the tent of meeting and set it up some distance from the camp. Everyone who wanted to make a request of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Verse 11. Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. God is speaking to Moses face to face. So you can imagine the scene. A million Hebrew slaves. Moses has brought them into the desert. They're camped in tents like this. Now there's 7,000 here and it's huge. But a million camped in the desert? They were there for 40 years. It took them 40 years to get from Egypt to the promised land, Israel. And here they are, a million of them. And Moses does something very special. So he sets up a tent on the outskirts of the camp. And what he does in this tent is totally, it is absolutely amazing. He talks face to face with God. He talks with God. And this is such a powerful experience that when he comes out of this tent, his face is shining with the glory of God. And you know what? It freaks the Israelites out a bit. And they say, hey man, put something over your face. We can't look at you. Now here's the point. Moses talked with God. And I'm here to tell you today that you can too. Let me show you how. This place at Burley, it's actually where I used to do a lot of surfing. I remember once I came here, and it was the middle of a cyclone and the waves were huge. I was never a really good surfer, but I'm gonna go out and I had a brand new Nev board. I remember at six foot six, it was a ripper. And I walked down to the rocks there and I launched out. I, I tried to time it between the sets. And I launched out and I timed it all right, right in the middle of a set. And this wave got me as I launched out from the rocks and threw me back on the rocks and ripped the skeg off my brand new surfboard. It was a sad day, let me tell you. But, but really I brought you here because it's such a beautiful spot. And I want to read you this Bible text. It's found in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And it's a really important text to where we're going now. Hebrews 4 verse 12, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. A 
thing I want you to understand here about this text is that the Bible is alive. It is not a dead book. When you open it, the Holy Spirit, who is God himself, comes down into your mind and into your heart, and the words leap out at you and leap out like fire. This is a very powerful experience that is available to us all. It's available to you. I want to share some more with you now. This is Duramba, one of the best beaches on the Gold Coast, not because it's the most picturesque, but because it's got one of the best breaks the entire length of the coast. And I used to come here a lot with my mates and surf, but you know what? I was never a real good surfer and that's a fact. And so I started off on the southern end and I really enjoyed surfing that end, but very quickly got moved on by the locals to the northern end where all the amateur surfers like me surf. But I got great memories of this place really good memories. You know, I want to take you to a verse in the Bible, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. This is the crux of the entire subject today, how to hear the voice of God. And if you get this, you'll get what I'm talking about. Let's read it. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes from the Word of God. Did you hear what that text said? Faith, that's believing God exists. Faith comes by hearing. By hearing, you've got to hear. And hearing comes by the Word of God, by the Bible. If you want to hear, if you want to hear God's voice, you've got to be, you've got to read the Bible. I want to, I want to unpack this a little more for you because this is very exciting. So here I am at my dad and mum's place in Brisbane, and I'm going to show you how to hear the voice of God. This is how I do it, and I do it every day. And if I can do it, I want to assure you, I promise you, I guarantee you, you can do it too. I've got an NLT Bible, and I've got an NLT Bible because it's a modern version. It's really, really easy to understand, and I think that's important. Now you remember at the beginning of this show, I said that one of the problems we have in hearing the voice of God clearly is sin. Sin is a block. Sin gets in the way. Now I don't want anything to block me now from hearing God, so this is what I do. I pray. Now normally I do it silently, but tonight, so you can see what I do, I'll say it out aloud. So let's do it. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, I come before you, I acknowledge I'm a sinner, and I pray for the forgiveness of my sins. Wash me clean, I pray, so that I can hear you clearly. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I can begin my Bible study. Now I begin listening to God. This is very exciting. I divide my page into four columns. And at the top of each column, I have a heading. First column, date. Second column, Bible book chapter and verse. Third column, what it means to me. And the fourth and last column, pray or what I can pray about. I then write the date, 27th of September, 2016, and I begin my Bible study. And when I begin my Bible study, I read really, really slow because I'm looking for God's voice to me. I'm not just reading it like I read a book. I'm actually searching, listening very intently. I'm trying to hear the voice of God. So here we go, Romans 12 verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of what He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Oh, God's voice leapt out at me there. And so then I write down what that verse actually means. I might sit for a moment. I might meditate on it. I might go back and read it a couple of times. I'm listening. I'm looking for the voice of God. This is what it said to me. God wants me, Lloyd Groleman, to be a living sacrifice. And so I write it down. God wants me to be a living sacrifice. Is there anything I can pray about in this scripture? I think about it again. I meditate. Well, yeah, there is. Help me, and I'm writing this down in the prayer column now. Help me, Lord, to surrender to you. And so I keep going in this Bible study. I might do three verses, I might do five. When I've had enough, when I can't concentrate any longer, I stop. And that is God speaking to me. Powerful, isn't it? You try it, you'll be surprised. 
God's been speaking to me. I've been in Romans, so really, really clear. Now I'm going to speak back to him from the prayer column. And so I talk to the Lord in prayer. I'm responding. And I do it with my eyes open. This is a prayer with your eyes wide open. Lord. So here we go. Lord. And this is real. Lord, help me to surrender to you. Lord, transform me. Lord, I want to see myself clearly for my weaknesses and my strengths. Thank you for talking with me today, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, just a couple of other little things. When you first start this, you might only get one thing, a Bible reading from God. In fact, you might go through days where you get nothing. That's okay. Stick with it. Don't give up. Keep going. The more you listen to God through your Bible study, through your Bible reading, the more you're going to hear his voice. You will recognize it. He will not be left in a maze of other voices in your head. You will hear him until you get to where I am. I've been doing this for 25 years. I can just about open the Bible anywhere and start reading. And God starts speaking to me. This is an incredible experience. And I pray you have it like I have, because I tell you what, it's a real privilege. 24 years ago, almost a quarter of a century ago, I got moved by my employer, the church here in southeast Queensland, from the Gold Coast to the Sunshine Coast. Not bad, eh? And I'm about to get married. And so I come up here with my dad and we're looking for a, a house or a, a block of land. And we came to this street. It was like, in my mind, it's like it was yesterday. And we go down this street, there's not a single, as I go down this street, there's not a single house anywhere on this side of the street. And all these blocks of land were for sale, an acre and a quarter. And I found this block, and it's just down here. I paid 72,000 for it. Can you believe it? An acre and a quarter. Here it is here, and I, I built this house. And you wouldn't believe it, they've even got the same letterbox out the front. And three of the best years of my life were spent here. And I loved living here. And I want to show you why I love living here. Come and have a look at the Sunshine Coast for a moment with me. This place is paradise on earth. It's heaven. So I've been living here for three years and you can imagine that I'm enjoying myself. New wife, brand new home. I'm in a fantastic, fabulous church. Did I tell you I was also the youth pastor here for the Sunshine Coast? We had a youth group that had gone from 20 to 300. Everything is perfect. It couldn't have been better. And then the church asked me to go to New Zealand. I remember the day, now I love New Zealand, beautiful place, but to move from the Sunshine Coast to New Zealand? I was sure I didn't want to go. And I sat on that call maybe three or four days and finally I did what I'm trying to encourage you to do today. I came down here to this exact spot. I sat down, I looked out at the ocean, I watched the waves for about 20 minutes and I opened the Bible and I went looking for God's voice. This is what he told me. I ended up in Matthew chapter 28. Couldn't believe it. You know what it said? Go ye therefore into all the world. Go into all the world. And that's not just the Sunshine Coast. It's beautiful New Zealand too. So I ended up in New Zealand. Good story. God's leading. God talking to me. I got another one. Just a short one. It's when I first came to Christ. I'm on fire. God's telling me all this stuff and my life is changing dramatically. But I was making a big mistake. I was looking at other people and I was judging them. And I wanted to go up and talk to them. Sometimes I did. And tell them about their sins and what they're doing wrong and to stop it. I'm in my Bible, my Bible study one morning. Romans chapter 2, verse 1, and God rebuked me. And it was as clear as if I'd been standing in his throne room. He was looking down at me and he spoke to me and he spoke to me so, so clearly. Let me read it to you. 
You may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad and you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself. For you who judge others do these very same things. Wow, wow, wow. God is talking to me. Yeah, he was rebuking me. He was even disciplining me a little bit. But it was really cool. God was speaking to me. And for the first time in my life, I was beginning to hear the voice of God. It was very exciting. And if I can have this experience, so too can you. I promise you, you can have it too. So that's how you hear the voice of God. Exciting, isn't it? Open your Bible. Read slowly, carefully. Listen intently. You will hear his voice. Now to start off with, you might only hear his voice once every couple of Bible readings. But after a while, you'll begin to recognize it. You know, now after 25 years, I can open the Bible and I can hear his voice almost instantly. It's a powerful experience and I wish it for you. You remember Jane at the beginning of our program? She was certain she heard the voice of God. She was sure. But I'll tell you something you can be sure of. She didn't hear it from the Bible. She didn't hear the voice of God the way I've shown you today. In 25 years, I've been reading my Bible. I've been listening to God speak to me, and I have found it 100% reliable. You can rely on what God tells you through your Bible study. So I encourage you, go there, go there, go there. Start a relationship today with a live, real, living God. You'll never be the same again. I hope you enjoyed our program today. I know I did. It's a bit of a trip down memory lane as we've gone back to the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast, places I lived 20, 25 years ago, and I've had a lot of fun. But as we come to the conclusion of this program today, I want to offer you a book. It's a book that has fundamentally changed my life, and it talks a lot more about hearing the voice of God and knowing Jesus. It's called The Desire of Ages, and I'll send it out to you. No obligation, completely free of charge, and I know it's going to bless you. My name's Lloyd Grolleman. I'm the Aussie pastor. I love you, truly I do, but I tell you, God loves you a whole lot more. See you next week.